So Julio and I have been on the air for a short while. Today is our eighth show, and I think it's about time we learned how we're doing. So we're going to verse off in a talk-off with Susan Murphy oh, of WLIW as our judge. Hopefully, we can fix our flaws and let our strengths shine in a game called Totally Tongue Twisted. The game is simple. Julio and I are competing with each other to deliver our best radio voice. But instead of reporting breaking news, we're going to be reading tongue twisters as today's headlines. Each of us will have to win over Susan Murphy. We will go for two rounds deciding who will go first with a quick game of rock, paper, scissors. Yes! Susan, feel free to give us some pointers. And tweet us, please tweet us at SBI News for who you think should win. The first game I get to participate in. Yes. <laughs> Julio is usually our judge. Oh, so. okay. Yes. Hey, I'll come in and judge anytime. All right. Good. So, Julio, we're going to go rock, paper, scissors, and then shoot. And just one round. Yes. Okay. okay, ready? Rock, paper, scissors, and shoot. Okay, scissors, rock, paper, scissors, and shoot. Uh, Julio wins. Julio goes first. So, I like how you painted that picture in my head, even if, if I were just a listener and you... I see rock, paper, scissors. That's the beauty of what we do. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm... <laughs> so there are, there are four prompts here in front of us, and Susan, just please choose one of them for Julio to read. We're, all of them are going to be used at some point. Each of us are going to use two of them. Okay, so I get to pick you get which to of these. Choose which one? All right. Um, and Julio goes first. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the first one is really too hard. I mean, that's to begin with. So, oh, let's do, <laughs> let's do C, the one that starts with Mary Mac. Okay. That's a, like a, it's a good one to warm up on. All righty then. Breathe. Mary Mac's mother's making Mary Mac marry me. My mother's making me marry Mary Mac. Will I always be so merry when Mary's taking care of me? Will I always be so merry when I marry Mary Mac? That's pretty good. You, and you know what the key to reading out loud well is? Is to, to, to train your eye to be slightly ahead of, or your eye and your brain to be slightly ahead of your mouth. So that you know whether a question is coming up or you know whether it's Mary or Mary. And you kind of, and if, by the time you do it twice, you probably do it perfectly. But that was a great um, first attempt. It's Mary, Mary, Mac, Mary. I, yeah, it's all in there. Yeah, hey. that's hard. And now which one should I have? Oh, well, you know, I gave him a short one to begin with. So, all right. The only other short one is the first one. So, all right, JD, might as well go for A. All right. It's short, but it's hard. Something in a 30-acre thermal thicket of thorns and thistles thumped and thundered, threatening the 3D thoughts of Matthew the Thug. Although, theoretically, it was only the 13,000 thistles and thorns through the underneath of his thigh that the 30-year-old thug thought of that morning. Did you practice? No, but I did write them. Oh, (laughs) see, I told you, when you write things down, type them, write them, you... automatically get better. To be fair, it was at 3 a.m., so I'm not sure I really remember oh, what was okay. there. okay. Well, you know, you didn't you didn't stumble once, and every TH came out perfectly. Cognitive. So when you, when you breathe, is it important to, even though there's a comma or a dash or a period, is it okay to take a pause where you feel is needed? Oh, always. I've, I always advise my students, and even in, in an interview, when you think, or in a conversation, think you're going a mile a minute, take a breath and make the pause work for you. It allows, first of all, a listener to catch up with what it is you're rambling about, but it also allows you to reformulate your thoughts and to maybe let's, let's slow it down or let's take another direction. So sure, we're always so afraid of, quote, dead air in a conversation or on the radio or wherever we are. Be afraid of the pause. Make it work for you. You get people's attention that way. Hmm. Okay, Julio, it's your turn. Oh, do I get to pick? Yes. Yes. B. All right. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a sharp, sharp shock. From a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block. To sit in solemn silence in a dull dark dock. 
in a pestilential prison with a long, lo, lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock. From a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block, a dull, dark duck, a long, lifelong lock, a short, sharp shock, a big black block, to sit in solemn silence in a pestilential prison, and awaiting the sensation from a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block. <laughs> That's what crazy because that? I'm so our, our sorry. Little I words made you do that. come in there. <laughs> no, you're not. No, I'm not sorry for I'm one little sorry. minute, are you? Really, really well done. You, know, you can so you can get so wrapped up um, in the absolute proper pronunciation of things, but you know, you think about the human ear. We forgive those little mistakes all the time. Oh, my TV students, when I teach them, they think misreading something on a prompter is the end of the world. It's not. Just kind of quickly get back. And then if you were to ask someone at the end of the show, if like you did at Julio, and I said to anybody, oh, did Julio make a mistake? Everybody would be hard-pressed to say yes, unless you, Julio, make a big deal of it. So when, you, when you're reading or in conversation when you trip up, first of all, that's where a pause can help you come back together. But don't even let it go. Just move right past it graciously. Best thing to do. I would sing that frozen song, but I don't think we're licensed for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, I'm not so sure you could do it much more justice than uh, Idina Menzel. So, so I guess you get to do D, or are we gonna just? Oh no! I, I mean, if I have to, then I will. You don't have to. It's up to you. <sighs> oh, you want to go for ahead? I can show. tell you. For go the ahead. show. Go ahead. <laughs> Out in the pasture, the nature watches, watcher watches the catcher, while the catcher watches the pitcher who pitches the balls. Whether the temperature's up or whether the temperature's down, the nature watcher and the catcher and the pitcher are always around. The pitcher pitches, the catcher catches, and the watcher watches. So whether the temperature rises or whether the temperature falls, the nature watcher just watches the catcher who's watching the pitcher who's watching the balls. Very good. Very good. I, that kind of almost sings by the end of it. That where you, yours, Julio, the one before, had odd words thrown in. Yours didn't have. It just sang. I like that. So something that I find when I'm listening to either somebody reading a book on tape or on do they even have books on tape anymore? <laughs> uh, more more like uh, you know, audio books or right. digital books or even on the radio or on a podcast is that that sing-songy voice can get very, very tiresome, very, very quickly. And absolutely, and the quickest way to correct that, and I, Julio, you know what, I, what I, I'm going to say, it's you always make an intellectual, emotional connection to what you're reading. And if you do, rather than just like, okay, this is black and white on a page, I just need to get to the end of it, just let me get to the end, I don't even care what I'm reading about, I just need to get to the end, connect with it. You know, I talked about earlier, you have to be genuine in your conversation. Be genuine in your reading. Take it into the brain and and connect with it. And sing song, boom, goes right away. Done. Flavor into it. We are so lucky to have Susan Murphy, voice of WLIW, and a laundry list of others, including Walk 97.5, joining us today. 